good day to all our viewers out there. We welcome to our we welcome you to our interview with a very special guest. But first, I am Aaron Benviahe. I am Glynis Jandawa. And I am Ana Paula Policarpio. And we are your hosts for today's interview. So I need to I'm so Glynis and Anna. How have you been? Okay. Yes, go ahead. So Glynis and Anna, how have you guys been uh, since the lockdown started? Since the lockdown, I think I've been trying to cope and adjust, especially with the online setup for college. But despite everything, I think I'm just trying to look for the silver lining of things. And um, what about you, Glynis? Have things been well for you? Things have been great. Quarantine has taught me anxious at first, but spending a lot of time with my family and keeping in touch with my friends somehow made me, somehow made me feel at ease even with all the chaos going on this year. How about you, Aaron? It's been great. Uh, lockdown has been really hard on us, uh, I'm sure, but I've been keeping myself busy with things like baking and knitting and all that, so uh, it isn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. That's great. I hope we'll get through all of this as soon as possible. After all, 2020 has been very hard on all of us. By the way, I heard that we have a special guest today. Yes, he is a psychiatrist and an admin officer for the Hospital ng Muntinlupa. Without further ado, let us introduce our special guest for today, Dr. Nicanor E. Chavez. Good morning. Yeah, do I have the floor? Yes, Paul. Yeah. Okay, good morning. Um, just make a clarification. Right now, um, I've been an administrative officer of the Osmond, but right now, since 2018, I'm not connected to Osmond anymore, and I have a new pos pos uh, position being the uh, program director of the Muntinlupa City Community-Based Mental Health Program. Mental Health Program. So that's uh, what's my position right now. Uh, so um, I'm ready for uh, for the quest first question. Uh, uh, before we start, uh, first of all, uh, um, thank you for accepting our invitation, po, Doc. You're welcome. Welcome, po. Um, Aaron. Um, so, uh, Doc, first question, po, namin is, uh, can you give a brief background, po, on what you do and um, as well as some mga past projects, mo, po? Um, okay, if we start with the current uh, current uh, activities, right now from the start of the pandemic uh, since March, I was not connected yet with the government. I offered a uh, free consultation for prescription, electronic prescription for the initially for the uh, senior citizens, and then eventually to my psychiatric patients. And with uh, a lot of patients coming all the way to Mindanao, Apari to Mindanao. So that's what my volunteering. So, and then came some of this, um, even the non psychiatric patient. And then the other one is move back before the COVID. I've been doing well, part of my as a position of a, a politician, uh, we're doing um, uh, medical missions. Our, my signature activity is the Operation Libring Tuli every every summer uh, in Lupa for the past life, right? For the past eight years now, although I started that one 1998 since then. So some of those medical missions and uh, uh, Libring uh, free circumcisions. <laughs> and then aside from an ambush consultation in anywhere I go. <laughs> I do play tennis, they have a lot of consultations, free consultations. That's my volunteering uh, services. You know? Yeah. That's wonderful, sir. Uh, especially for in this time of pandemic, we think that you have been very brave and it is very nice of you to be giving a helping hand, especially to those who are in need. Um, so Doc, we would love to know what inspired you to start volunteering and how exactly did it happen? Yeah, that question has been asked to me in one of our interviews as a media. Then the first time I heard that, oh, how did it start? Then I remember during my high school days, 
third year high school, when I entered my uh, scouting, well, that's a normal a scouting journey. However, when we went through to uh, the rank of a, or, or a uh, next to result scout, then we, we started training. We were training, we have a group of best core, uh, Barang, uh, Brotherhood Emergency Training Corps, wherein we have one week training uh, in the wilderness of, uh, of uh, Samal Island of Davao. And then after that, we went back to the city. We have our hand, uh, neckerchief, and then during the weekends, in any emergencies, we were there. Uh, fire, uh, crossing the old lady to the pedestrian lane, and all those, those disasters. We were even recognized as the city. So I think that was the start of my passion of volunteering, of helping others, like an old lady crossing the streets, making a traffic. Okay, so those are the things. That, then I went to the college. I joined the C, uh, SEAs, uh, Social Catholic Action Group. And then I said, through, all throughout those uh, medical days, we, go, we went through um, Mangyan Subendoro, and the Aetas of Zambales. Every summer and December for three, four years, we've been doing all those uh, medical missions. So that's how I developed my, my volunteering um, passion. We, even during those uh, yes, uh, high school and the college days. Okay. Yeah, that's how it started and how I maintained it. So, yung po yan. Yeah. As of the moment, po, Doc, do you have any ongoing programs? And if there are, can you share some small details about them? Okay. Um, so ngayon, we're focused on my advocacy. My advocacy even before I was hired because I was hired July, July 2000 to this year as, my, as a program director, local government uh, unit, as a, lo a program director of the Muntinlupa Mental Health Program. But aside from that, I'm doing a lot of uh, mental health and wellness webinar uh, for the promotion of mental health. And then I started also establishing this, uh, this uh, virtual movement of uh, wellness crusade wherein you can sign in in your uh, email. And then at the same time, in anywhere I go, in anywhere, any invitations I go, I have this kind of uh, passion to, to, to really share with our population, especially nowadays, where in, there's really an increasing uh, cases of anxiety and depression among, even at, across the ages, but most especially the young adolescent and early uh, the young adults, no? from ages as young as 11, 10, 11 years old, self-inflicting, etc., and then up to young adults and no, middle, middle age uh, bracket. So at this point, I continue my e-prescription. Oh, by the way, I just want to share with you that my e-prescription is uh, ranges from free consultation to a socialized price or to the to I'm still doing my private practice as a psychiatrist. But uh, most services, 60 to 80 percent of it is um, free online consultations and oh, we call it tele teletherapy or uh online therapy so that's the current one that i'm doing aside from the ambush prescription of anywhere i go <laughs> from the our co-employees uh and other any uh, group of uh oscar members and um, i always have with me my prescriptions for free consultations <laughs> that's it Yes, yeah. We thank you for your hard work and kindness, Paul, Dr. Chavez. Um, may you share with us, Paul, the very reason or the very purpose why you serve others, Paul? Well, as I said earlier, it just developed to me and it became a passion. It, it started with a, wow, I belong to this movement of this, of this kind of, you know, Barkadahan, uh, uh, I belong to this kind of uh, best uh, scouting movement, etc. And you know the ideas of scouting: uh, be prepared, be prepared for tulungin, and etc. etc. But somehow it really developed to become a in my passion. And then 
uh, I went to politics and you know politics is all about uh, serving um, your constituents and then but um, basically I just derived my gratification or pass based on uh, happiness and serving other people uh, well you said if you have to have a basis on which is that our the good book says that uh, whichever whatever you do to the list of your brethren you do it unto me and in fact that was his basis of segregating the kambing against the lamb no? so during the judgment day isa lang ina sinabi niya sabi niya kung ginusgahan siya whatever you do to your list of your brother so you do it to me to me that's a very strong motivational factor for me to anytime anywhere in any opportunity to help to extend help and others and it has become it became part of my persona it became part and it right now it became a passion maniwala po kayo and then it's really passion and i have this uh, i even use this media like fb page if you like my FB page, I just posted two or three, although it's part of my, my job, but uh, going to Sunday, Saturdays, res responding to an emergency call of a psychiatric disturbed patient, injected, which is a community psychiatry, actually. So I, 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 I find it satisfying and gratifying. And then in the end, after all, at the end of the day, pag tayo nakaharap sa ating Panginoon, ang tanong sa atin, ano nang nagawa mo sa iyong kapwa? So that would be my source, uh, grat source of gratification and my ult ultimate motivation to help others. Thank you. You can really hear and feel your passion for towards serving others. Um, so out of all volunteer, out of all the volunteering that you've done so far, po, Doc, can you tell us about some of your memorable experiences and what made them unforgettable po, for you? I could really, uh, I could really remember too. When in one of those uh, volunteer, like uh, driving a patient to a in emergency hospital all the way to Pavelia, Pavelia, a patient uh, expectant deliver about to deliver a baby. So I just drove them like an ambulance driver. Da dinal namin sa sa Pavelia and. It was really a, 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 a an abnormal pregnancy, a difficult pregnancy, and true enough, the baby and the mother was saved. And then I thought it was just a, one of those uh, my my charity or my char voluntary work. But years after that, after that, when I when I do the campaign during the election, somebody hugged me and they said, "Doc." Ito na yung baby, oh. Ito yung manta. Ang laki na niya. Kami po yung hinatid mo doon sa, sa pabelya. At if it's not for you, sabi niya, wala po itong baby ito. Patay po siya, sabi niya. Kasi, and then I was really touched by that. Kasi wala naman ako ano noon. Kasi, tapos sabi niya, tapos nag-bless yung bata na ano na mga five to seven years old na siya. Yung po yung laking na, I was so touched by that, uh, yung expression of gratitude nung nanay Ay sila pala yung dinala ko, yung sinamahan ko doon papuntang uh, pabelya at sinasabi niya. And it was a very strongly worded na, if not for you, this kid and my mom, this mother will be, well, of course, uh, exaggeration siguro, pero somebody could have brought them too. Pero sinabi niya, wala sana itong baby, ito sa harap natin kung wala kayo. Nag, ano. So it's really, talagang tumama sa akin yun. Tapos, uh, so, a lot of more stories na hindi naman ganun ka. Pero yung isa pa, is my compadre na he was, I was I was driving, an ambulance driver na naman ito, na he was actually gasping for breath, chatterized he heart attack. And then, I happened in Muntinlupa kasi ang mga wake kasi ang wake, no? Nasa kalsada, no? And then I was passing by with my patient na... It was a heart attack, actually. Talagang gasping for breath. Talagang, that was, he was so uh, in, in, in deep uh, crisis of trouble of pulmonary or this uh, difficulty of breathing. And then I passed through the, <laughs> yung mga, yung wake ba na, the whole uh, 
the whole street was full of uh, people na, na uh, nakikiramay and then I was I was uh, beeping continuously and just flushing and then all the people were scampering for free uh, to 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 for safety para padaanin ako kinlir naman nila kinlir naman nila and then I just uh, reached MCM pagkatapos noon sabi ng doctor you must immediately intubated talagang the rescue talaga siya because he was resuscitated and then true enough na nabuhay naman yung ano nabuhay naman yung uh, tao na dinala ko and again the family was so thankful about it pero ang nangyari sa doon sa akin yung yung i almost hit a lot of people just for these people for for this uh, friend of mine to be saved uh, rushing to the uh, emergency room so yun ang mga isang mga halos hindi ko makalimutan mga experiences na no? because I almost bump somebody or hit somebody just I could imagine kung may nahita ko man na may nahita ko tao na nasaktan sila pero trying to save this one guy at the back of my car sabi ko no? anyway thank God wala naman nasaktan during those times of nung dumaan ako dun sa wake na yan okay thank you that experience uh, is really um, touching for Sorry. And uh, I think we can all agree that experiences can be quite the, quite the most magical moments, no? Doc, can you give us some moments that have helped you realize the fulfillment in serving others? Yeah, every time I hear those um, pasasalamat and those old stories that uh, made me... Uh, Parang somehow nakatulong ako sa kanila. And then, I just want to share this with you, no? Na kung paano ako nagkaroon ng realization on ano talaga ba ang purpose ko sa pagpapa, uh, pagtutulong. Is it, minsan nagtitainted by, ah, tumutulong ka lang because you're running for a position, politika. Ah, nakakalungkot. In fact, one of those people na who defended us, kasi pareho kaming mag-asawa, pareho kami nasa politics, eventually to, in one way or another, na, in the past, nagsa politics kami. And there was an issue on me na, oh, kaya lang yan ang tumutulong dahil tatakbo. And then, one of our Paris priests doon sa ano na, who really felt our charitable work, sabi niya, ako makapagsasabi, wala pa sa politika si Doc, tumutulong na yan sa amin. Tumutulong na yan sa, kumbi, sa, sa seminaryo, sa mga ganito, ganyan. So, ang, ang ano ko doon is that, even with, without politics, before the politics, during the politics, and after the politics, ito na po ako. And then the, let me share this with you at this point in time. Na I attended one of my retreat seminars sa isang, sa isang madre na contemplative mother, sa, yung sa Regina Rosary. Ang tanong namin, ang title doon, In Search for Deeper Meaning of Life. Ang title ng retreat, In Search for Deeper Meaning of Life. Ang isang tanong sa amin, given the opportunity, if you are, kung namatay ka na and you're in your wake, given the opportunity to listen to the eology of those people on the wake, yung mga taong naka, nagsasalita tungkol sa iyo, tinanong kami doon sa exercise na ano ang gusto mong marinig? At first, sabi ko, nahirapan ako maggawa ng... Could you imagine? We were asked to make our own eology. Yeah. So, matagal lang exercise. Pero nung naisip ko na, sabi ko, ang gusto ko marinig sa mga tao, pag ako ay patay na, ang gusto ko marinig, kung given the opportunity, given the opportunity to listen, I just want to listen to hear them, how I was able to touch their lives, one way or another. That way, at this moment, buhay pa ako. That was that is my present uh, goal in life. Na in one way, kahit maliit na pagbagay, kahit yung mga tao lamang na nag-assist sa akin sa sakyan pa uwi, uh, palabas sa parking lot, I always look at it as an opportunity for me to be able to touch their lives. Kahit maliit man lamang, in a way, like, uh, ginagawa ko, I, pag, Usually five, gagawin ko 10 pesos, 20, or kung paano an opportunity in every opportunity, I can help these people, kaibigan man o strangers, whatever na yan, so that I could somehow 
touch their lives. Kung paano ako makatulong sa kanila, one way or another. So yun po yung magiging, I hope I can I answered my, your question about kung paano ang moment at paano natin mga na, napagpatuloy itong passion kung to help others. No? So uh, I would say na to me that was the answer of my question. Ano ba talaga ang meaning sa aking buhay? Bakit ako nag, hanggang ngayon? What, is the, how, what does life to me mean? Aside from being head of the family, as of being having a kid and a grandkids, no. So at that seminar, I was able to contemplate na gusto ko pala na kung paano ako makapag makapag makatulo, makatas sa buhay ng isang individual or family or community. Thank you. Okay, so um, Doc, uh, last question na po namin. Um, what inspires you po to keep volunteering and to keep helping other people? Well, ang isang inspiration, siyempre, siyempre ko sa spiritual inspiration talaga yan. And as, aside from the fact na talagang, ewan ko, na andun talaga ang pleasure eh. Andun talaga ang, ang happiness is the, oh, well, it's not even a pleasure. It's a, more than it's a joy. It's the joy to share. Ewan ko lang kung ang persona ko doon, even, I remember ng mga, during my residency training days, pag may humiram sa akin ng pera, pag wala akong pera, mangungutang ako para ipahiram sa pera. Ganon ka basic, ka, ano ako ka, you know, hindi makahindi, hindi makatanggi, hindi makaano. And then, I really find joy in, in helping. Ganito yun, tinapal natin. No? So, um, to me, that is a very strong motivational factor. The inspiration, the uh, the uh, spiritual inspiration, and then the common, and then of course the uh, feedback that you receive, the affirmation that you, you mga support ako sa ati mga FB page na you're doing great, lahat sana yun. And then lately, sa page ko, and dami na realize ko, and dami nagdadasal para sa akin. Pero I learn a lot of, ang dami ko mga near-death accidents, may mga near, ano, yung nakakatulog ako, nakaka, nagigising ako, tapos near, nasisave ang sarili ko, sabi ko. Tapos I remember all those mga feedback. Ang dami palang nagdadasal sa akin, sa aking safety. Dahil na, uh, ang wish nilang mas makatulong pa ako sa iba. So... kahit despite of no matter what. And then I'm, what I'm preaching, right? Oh no, sorry the word preaching. What I'm now advocating, especially the positive attitude, yung positive attitude namin ng therapy na binibigay ko during my mental health webinar, ito rin po yung nagdadrive sa akin to, to do more and more, which the positive attitude of advocacy is, lahat yun merong kaakibat na compassion, loving kindness, and I'm advocating what I'm doing like uh, compassion and loving kindness and you know my services naman talaga yun oh. okay so I hope I answer your question again uh, yes po, doc so thank you so much Paul for spending your time with us in this interview you're welcome um, you're welcome is there anything Paul that you would like to say to our viewers out there who also want to make a change and help those in need, Doc? Um, briefly, sasabihin ko lang sa kanila, healthy lifestyle. There is no substitute of healthy lifestyle. Sleep before 10, wake up before 6. Regular exercise, balanced diet, no too sad. What is sad? S-A-D, smoking, alcohol, drugs. Yung apat na yan. And then, Live mindfully. What is living mindfully? Live in the present moment. No more brooding over the past. No, bro no worrying and overthinking about the future. Just be present. Just be at the present moment. You only live in the past. You only think of the past to learn your lesson. You only think of the future to plan. Okay? So, ang pangatlo, positive attitude of acceptance, forgiveness, 
gratefulness in your heart, non-judgmental, loving kindness, compassion, humility, just complete it, integrity, trust, and faith. And then, if you have time, meditate every day. Meditation. <laughs> so, yun po yung aking advocacy. And then, probably, please like my FB page, Okidok Echaves Wellness Through Mindfulness. Paki plus. <laughs> uh, Sir Glynis, paki plus. FB page ni Okidok, Okidok Echaves Wellness Through Mindfulness. I also have a YouTube channel, Wellness Through Mindfulness by Okidok Echaves. Okay? Oh, tapos, kung sino man ang gusto mag-online consultation, you can reach me to my messenger ni Canore Chavez or Viber at 0977-272-4402. Okay? 0977-272-4402. That's my Viber. So, pwede. Reach mo out kung gusto nyo magkaroon ng like, for example, coaching lang or mga consultations dyan. I can be of help to you. Thank you. Salamat sa invitation. Uh, thank you so much po for giving time uh, to be with us po now and giving us so many amazing um, stories and um, yung mga uh, tips nyo po and all that. And as a token of our appreciation po, we would like to present to you uh, this certificate that our team made especially for you. This certificate is for being an inspiration, not just to us and to our uh, audience, but also to the people that you have helped. So uh, oh. thank you. Thank you. Paki PM mo nalang to, send blindness, send mo nalang sa akin sa messenger. Yes po, Doc. Sorry po for that. Nawalan po ako ng internet connection. Oh, okay. Sige. Thank you. Thank you so much for Doc. And that's all for today, folks. So on behalf of our team, again, we would like to thank Dr. Chavez for making this interview happen, Doc. Um, we really couldn't have done it without you. Also to our audience, um, thank you for taking the time to watch and listen as we went through the magnificent story of Dr. Chavez as a volunteer. So again, okay, I am Erin Benviaje. I'm Glynis Gandawa. And I'm Ana Paula Policarpio. Thank you, stay safe, and let's continue to make the world a better place one small step at a time. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Hello. Thank you so much, Dr. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much.